allocating general reserve and creation of capital reserve. So basically, in the last question or the questions that we have seen till now, we were just having the balance in profit and loss account. In this question, what is different is that we have general reserves in the book of subsidiary as well. Right? Let's read the question. Balance sheet as on 31st March 2012. So my closing date is 31st March 2012. On the asset sites, H Limited, S Limited, fixed assets, investment in 70% of shares of S Limited. So H Limited's column reflect that it has made an investment by making an investment of 1 lakh in 70% of shares of S Limited. Very good. Current assets, then on the liability side you have creditors, general reserve, PL, and equity shares. So what is new here is that we have a general reserve balance insofar as S Limited is concerned. Now how will you allocate this general reserve is the key thing which we are going to learn about this question. Assuming the acquisition of share took place on October 1, 2011. Okay, so acquisition took place on October 1, 2011. My financial year starts on 1-4-2011 when the balance in profit and loss account of S Limited was rupees 30,000. So the profit and loss account balance on this date is 30,000. But I do not know what is the balance of general reserve on this date. Right? Prepare consolidated balance sheet. Now before I go and move ahead with preparation of consolidated balance sheet, let me explain one thing to you. As I told you, whenever you have an investment, okay, let's use a different sheet for this maybe. So when you prepare your cost of control, and maybe even you can skip this thought for a minute, whenever you make an investment in any company, as I told you earlier also, there are two things which you get. One is your share capital plus the reserves, right? The reserves can again be broken down into profit and loss account or the general reserve, right? So whenever you have to compute cost of control, what is cost of control? Cost of control is basically nothing but the excess or deficit between what you pay, what do you pay? You make an investment minus the share in net assets or the share capital plus reserves your proportionate stake in this. Right? So when you are told that you have a general reserve balance in the books of accounts, it becomes important just like in the case of profit and loss account to ascertain whether this general reserve is a capital reserve or a revenue reserve. The significance of these two lies in the fact that if it is a capital reserve, it is considered for my cost of control. Whereas if it is a revenue reserve, even general reserve will go and add to my revenue profits. Right? And therefore this bifurcation becomes important. We'll look at the cost of control calculations, maybe in a different sheet now. Okay? Let us see how we prepare our consolidated balance sheet. So here you have fixed assets, 250 and 150. What I will do is for the interest of time and space, I will prepare this balance sheet in the format prescribed by the schedule six, but instead of showing liabilities first and then assets first. So basically schedule six presents in the, this format. So you have equity and you have the asset side or the liability side and asset side coming like this. I will consider the equity side on this side and the asset side on this side. Right? This is just to avoid and uh, maybe save some space, but you can consider it as if it were a vertical balance sheet. 
so you have the liabilities side on this side you have the asset side on this side in the asset side the first thing that you have is non current assets right non current assets what do we have here 2 lakh 50000 and 1 lakh 50000 fixed assets are not current assets so non current assets will basically comprise of fixed asset 2 lakh 50000 and these fixed assets are of h limited s limited 1 lakh 50000 4 lakh right please note that all this calculation has to go and sit in the schedules if you want i can prepare the schedules also but maybe as we reach a larger level of question there we will prepare these schedules separately then we have investments investments in s limited please note that the investment which are there in the books of h limited can be again be broken into two parts one is the investment into subsidiary and one is the other investments other investments are going to go and sit here in the balance sheet whereas the investment in subsidiary will go to the cost of control right in this case we know that this entire investment is in respect of s limited so we will just straight away take it to cost of control so we will take investment and this is for the 70 percent stake so we have minority 30 percent 1 lakh is what we have invested then current assets 180 and 160 gives you 340 right so second is current assets right again this calculation of current assets which i'm showing has to go in the schedule but i'm just writing it here to save some time and efforts 180 plus 160 Three lakh forty thousand, right? So what I have done is I have completed the posting of the entire balance sheet. Let's move on to the liability side. Creditors one fifty and ninety. So where will the creditors go and sit? As per the revised schedule, there's a schedule which says that it has to disclose the current liabilities. In current liabilities, you have to show trade payables okay trade payables basically will include your creditors 150 plus 90 will give you 2 lakh 40 thousand let me draw a line out here also right then i have equity share capital of h limited this is going to be disclosed as equity and liabilities will be the heading right then within this equity and liabilities first thing you have is shareholders funds sub clause a share capital right so how much is the share capital the first share capital will be of h limited 2 lakh in fact that will be the only share capital which will come here share capital of s limited will go to the cost of control one lakh is the total less equity share capital 70 percent of one lakh or seventy thousand minority interest equity share capital thirty thousand then profit and loss account and general reserve of h limited will form part of schedule in the reserves and surplus b reserves and surplus because there are many entries here so let me just prepare an annexure for reserves and surplus right so how much is the profit and loss account then i have general reserve right so what are the two numbers one lakh and eighty thousand for h limited one lakh eighty thousand these are both for h limited right let's go to the subsidiary 
the subsidiary has 80,000 of profit and loss account and 30,000 of general reserve. So for this, I will prepare what? Analysis of profit, right? Normally, whenever you prepare this analysis of profit, please mention the acquisition date here, October 1, 2011. So you have capital profits, you have a revenue, profit and loss account, you have revenue, general reserve, you have total. This is the standard format that you should use because the idea is to show each and every item separately. Profit and loss account and reserve. So if I go back, the profit and loss account is 80,000, reserve is 40,000. Profit and loss account 80,000, reserve 40,000. What are capital profits? Capital profits are the profits earned up to the date of acquisition, right? Now, if I go back, I have been told that the acquisition happened on October 1, 2011, when the balance in profit and loss account of S Limited was 30,000. So on the date of acquisition, the balance in profit and loss account is 30,000, right? Which means that 30,000 is the capital profit and loss account Right? Why have I taken this 30,000? Because on the date of acquisition, it is 30,000. Capital profits are what? Profits earned up to the date of acquisition. If these are 30,000, then the revenue profit and loss account is what? Total is 80,000. Capital is 30, which means the revenue is 80 minus 30 or 50,000. Right? Similarly for the reserves. But incidentally, what is happening here is I don't know what is the balance of reserve on this date? October 1, 2011. Now, whenever you are not given any information about the reserves, we assume, assume closing balance of general reserve is the same as opening balance. This is only in respect of general reserve, right? So 40,000, we will take the entire general reserve as capital general reserve. Had it been that this was the profit and loss account, right? We would have allocated or proportionately distributed this between pre and post, which we are going to see in the next question, right? But if for general reserve, you just know the closing balance, you don't know the whether it is the opening or what is the pre and what is the post, we assume that this is same as the opening balance and that there is no transfer. I mean, the difference between profit and loss account and general reserve is that while the general reserve account, you just have a transfer during the end of the year, profit and loss is earned during the year, right? So if nothing is given as to whether there is any transfer, we assume that this closing balance is the same as the opening balance, right? And there is nothing which is there in the revenue general reserve. Now, after this, I am clear that what is my total capital profits? 70,000. My revenue, 50,000. Revenue GR is nothing. Once I've got my capital and revenue profits, what do I do? I will allocate it between the holding company and the minority. 70%, 30%, 70% 70 of 70,000, 49,000. 21,000, 35,000, 15,000, right? Now let's be start putting these numbers into respective places. So capital profit share of holding company will go where? It will go to the cost of control, 49,000. Capital profit, right? Revenue profits of holding company will go and add to the reserves and surplus. Revenue profit and loss of subsidiary 35,000 the total of minority 21 plus 15 gives you 36,000 share of profit 36,000 is going to go and add here so you get 66,000 here right 70 plus 49 gives you 119 000. so 100 minus 119 gives you negative 19,000 if cost of control is negative, as we had discussed, this means it's a capital reserve, right? What is my total of reserves and surplus? 
100 plus 80, 180 plus 35, 215. Right? So now I've got all my totals. I'll put these in the balance sheet. So reserves and surplus is 215. Right? What is my minority interest? That will show here. Minority interest. What was the number? 66,000. Actually, the capital reserve balance also you can just add here only. I just forgot to miss. I actually missed this out. So 19,000. This has to be shown and added as the reserves in surplus here only. Right? Is there anything else that I need to do here? This I have posted. This I have posted. This I have done. So let me do the total of the balance sheet and see if it tallies. 7,40,000. Right? This will give me 2 plus 2, 4, 6, 640, 7, 6, 725, 740. Right? So, what are the two key learnings which I had from this? The two key learnings I had from this exercise was that one, if the GR balance is given, right, and nothing is mentioned as to when it was owned, we assume that it is entirely the opening balance. And second thing is we got a capital reserve in this particular question, this 19,000. Let me just write it here also. Capital reserve. Right? I hope you would have liked this question. If yes, please hit the like button. Do come and visit our website iadubook.com regularly to get many more such questions on a going forward basis. Right? If you want us to help others as well, you can share this on your Facebook links. Okay, you can send this to your friend and do many more things with this. Look forward to having you in many more future lectures ahead. Thank you very much for being with us today. This is Arinjay Kumar Jain, your educator for this video. iadubook.com has more than 1500 videos today, as on today, which are meant to educate and provide free online education to students. Help us in our efforts by letting others also know about these initiatives. Thank you very much for being with us today once again.